All right, so in this video, we will be making a simple PowerShell command program that will take information from a small text properties file and then changing it slightly and then inserting it into a new output text file that it will create on its own. And the first thing that we have to do for this is make a new folder in Windows Explorer. And then from there, you can right click, hit new text document. And this will be our properties file. Whatever we put in here will manipulate and change the behavior of the final program. So just call it properties. And from there, you can double click it. And there's several things that we can do here. Um, what I like to do is make a small comment. Um, and this is just a text file, so there's no syntax. I just want to notify anyone else who may use this properties file that this line doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to say insert name on line two. All right. And then just write your name on line two. And you can save that. And that's actually all we need with that. Now go back to your folder, right click, new, text document. But in this case, we don't actually want a text document. We want a .ps1. Um, I'm going to call this runner.ps1. Make sure to say yes. Now what this will do is uh, notify your computer that it is a PowerShell command program. So now what we can do is right click on it and hit edit. And it will open up a program called PowerShell ISE with runner.ps1 up top. And here's where all our PowerShell code will actually go. Now the first thing we want to do is add in our properties file that we just created and take all the information we need from it. And to do that, we'll make a variable. And a variable in PowerShell needs to start with the dollar sign. And then we can just name it whatever we want. In this case, properties. And set that equal to get content, which will tell the computer to get content from whatever file we want it to at our current location. So our current location being this VC documents PowerShell text formatter. It actually looks like that. And so it knows any other file in this directory to look at. In this case, properties dot text txt. And now on a new line, we want to actually get that specific piece of data we want. In this case, Drew on line two. To do that, we'll make a new variable. I'm going to call it name and set it equal to that properties document we have. And because properties is actually an array, we will use brackets and say one. So when I say array, I mean that this command will return an array, a list of every line we have in our properties file. In this case, we only have two lines, insert name and Drew. So if we said zero here, because this is going through indexes where you start at zero, followed by one, two, and so on, um, zero would return the instructions. We don't want that. We want what's on line one where it says Drew. So that's why we put one there. The next thing we want to do is create the output file, the location where our data is going to go. I'm going to call it output file. And we want to set that equal to our current location. To do that, we type get location, and that will return exactly what you would see here. C uses Drew documents PowerShell text formatter, plus all the backslashes. But it doesn't return it in a string, so we say dot path to clean it up for us. Now we append on the name of the file that we want. In this case, slash output.txt. Now make sure you have the backslash so it formats the file name properly. And then the next important thing to do is remove output file if it already exists. Um, in this case, it doesn't, but just in case, we want to say remove item and output file. And in case it already exists, it will delete it. So that way when we run it again, it will uh, be able to update and create a brand new file automatically. And speaking of new file, we want to make a new item based on our output variable as usual. And we have to specify that is a file type. To do that, we say item type and file is its type. So just in case there is any issues that happen on the hard drive, the computer, the program, or our code, we need to add a try and a finally. If you're familiar with Java, this is the same idea as a try catch. If whatever happens in this between these try curly braces, it will run whatever in the finally. I'm not actually going to put anything there 
because it's a quite simple program, we don't need any failure cases. It should work on the first try. Now to actually write to the file, we need to make a variable called writer, and we'll set that equal to system.io.streamwriter. And we need to specify where it's going to write to, meaning our output file. After that, we can actually start writing. In this case, we only have one line to write from, so we'll call writer. And we have a couple options here. Um, what we want is write line. You can also do write, but what write line does is it'll add a new line afterwards. If you want to print out multiple things, it'll automatically add lines between them just to add a little order to your document. And whatever is in these parentheses is what it'll print. Now we could just use our name variable and it'll print out Drew in this new file. But that's not really fun. We'll make it just a little bit more complex by appending out of the front a little message. In this case, how about hello, and then add a plus. And so now to say hello, Drew. But you do have to be careful that if you don't add a space here, it would just be hello, D-R-E-W, and you wouldn't have two words. So have that space there. And then on the end, we can add on a couple exclamation points just because we're excited. And the last thing we've got to do is close the writer just so it knows that we are all done and you can finish the file, update it, and so we can look at it. So save this. Lastly, all we have to do is actually run this. So go over to our folder, right click on runner.ps1, and hit run with PowerShell. And you're gonna see a command prompt open up, a bunch of text fly by, and then also the output file will show up. So mine showed up on my other monitor, no big deal, but you should have seen this output.txt file show up, which you could double click to open. And as you can see, hello Drew, plus the exclamation points. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video and the whole concept of PowerShell. I personally really enjoy using it on a daily basis when it comes to text manipulation and other programming related copy and pasting situations that you may need to use it for. I'll try to make another video on more specific examples of what you could do, for instance, jar files. So keep a lookout for that. Like this video if you liked it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.